Personal story segment tonight for more than 20 years. Cheryl Atchison reported the news for CBS. Much of that time was spent on investigations. She recently left the network and joins us now on a Factor Exclusive. So let's start with Fast and Furious. What did you find out about that? I found out that we had to quit pursuing the story, more or less, due to lack of interest well before we found answers to a lot of questions, including what about all the other cases besides the one you know is Fast and Furious that were also using similar strategies to transfer weapons down to Mexico, and how did this, if at all, play into a strategy the United States may be using to draw support or give support toward one of the cartels in Mexico against one of the others, much like they had done in Colombia and other places. All right, so um, they, they, they were playing one off against the other, but you, may, you said something interesting, that you had to abandon the story for lack of interest. Can you clarify that? It just came to be that, I don't think on the viewer's part, but on the people that decide what stories go into the broadcast and what there's room for, they felt fairly early on that this story was over when I felt as though we had barely begun to scratch the surface. All they right. didn't ask me what was left to report. They just decided on their own that the so story was done. So they pulled the rug from you. And, and I worked at CBS News, and I know how it goes. Uh, you can't investigate a story unless you get a budget to do so and approval of the higher-ups. Okay, you're going to do an uh, assignment, O'Reilly or Atkinson, and this assignment will go to this show. That's how the structure works. So they don't, they don't want any part of it over there. Um, okay. How about Benghazi? What you find out about that? Benghazi, I was assigned to look into about three weeks after the attacks happened by management and pursued that aggressively. And as I felt we were beginning to scratch beneath the surface on that scandal as well, which I think was had many legitimate questions yet to be asked and answered, um, interest was largely lost in that story as well on the part of the people that are responsible for deciding what goes on the news. So they, did they tell you, look, we don't want you to pay, spend any more time on this? Is it, was it that direct? No, it's more as though there's no time in the broadcast. They really, really like the story, but you start to hear from, you know, other routes that why don't you just leave it alone and, you know, you're kind of a troublemaker because you're still pursuing it. I mean, it, it kind of goes from hot to cold in one day sometimes where they're asking you to pursue something heavily and then it's almost as if a light switch goes off and they look at you all of a sudden as if, why are you bringing us this story? Is it possible because CBS News is third in the rating? that they are just doing stories that they think are going to get them audience? Is that possible? I suppose there could be differences of opinion as to what the audience wants to see, but I, I think there are larger things at play in the industry broadly. There are overarching concerns about, I would say, just fear over original investigative reporting. There is unprecedented, I believe, influence on the media, not just the news, but the images you see everywhere, by well-orchestrated and well-financed campaigns of special interests, political interests, and corporations, and I think all of that comes into play. Okay. So on Fast and Furious in Benghazi, you started and then you were forced to stop. Obamacare, you looked into that as well. I was asked by CBS to look into Obamacare, and it had a similar trajectory whereby we broke some interesting stories that I felt like we were uncovering some good information and making headway. But we, and I feel like a lot of the media, after several weeks of this, um, kind of fell off the radar on the story to a large degree on the critical looks that we were taking at security issues, the lack of transparency, um, the, the lack of prov providing of figures and information that I think belong in the public domain, belong to us, that were being withheld, while being provided in some cases to corporate partners of the government being withheld from us, though. When you say security, you mean uh, people's health records and things like that, and that they're not secure? Right. I mean, just before Christmas came word that the top security official, the computer security person, who still works there at HHS, had refused to sign off and recommended, in fact, that this website not go live because of all the security issues. Um, and that was not considered a big enough story, I suppose, is the way to put it by those who decide what goes on the air. But I thought it was hugely important because this is an insider, someone who works in the Obama administration, who'd made this assessment. And if you look at having had something like that occur with a private corporation that proceeded to go online with all of these alleged security risks, I think the government would be very upset by that if the tables were turned. But here it was the United States government doing it. All right, Cheryl. So you, you got frustrated. Now you're on your own. And, and if you want to see what Cheryl Atkinson is up to, you go to CherylAtkinson.com. We appreciate you coming on tonight.
Thank you. Plenty more ahead as the factor moves along this evening. Miss Megan on the kid who stabbed his classmates in Pennsylvania and the Muslim controversy in Boston. Also, our Man is Hell segment, Smoking Tonight. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> we don't want you to shut up. We want you to say what's on your mind, and we hope you stay tuned for those reports.